Hi, it's Mary Ann of MW's Designs. Welcome to my channel. I can't believe it's the end of January already, so I need to finish my January page in my bullet journal. I've just covered up parts of my page so I don't splatter too much paint on, on my finished portions. Today I am going to be putting in a background behind my larger hexagon snowflakes and what I want to do is have some more delicate lighter colored uh, snowflakes just to um, give this portion a little more interest because it just being blank it's kind of plain. So I'm again going to be using my watery blue paint and I've got a number five brush and this is a mixture of ultramarine blue and viridian. I think I might add just a bit more of the ultramarine. It's looking a, a little more green than I want it. So that looks a bit better. Okay, and I want just a very tiny bit of this paint. And these are going to be freehand snowflakes. Um, these ones I did using the hexagon, and that made it a little bit easier to make it um, even between each of the six points. But in this one, what I do to make a freehand snowflake is I paint an X, and it's a kind of flattened X, and then I draw a perp perpendicular line through the middle, and that makes it fairly even. Each of these angles need to be 60 degrees. So maybe just a few little extra details. So I'm going to do some of these blue ones and put white paint on top of them and then I'm actually going to use some that are just white. Some of them will be overlapping and that will create a bit of depth. Okay, let's a very small one over here and some of them I will leave plainer okay and maybe one right down here a little bigger okay I'm gonna fix that just by making it a little flatter okay And then I'm going to grab my liner brush. It's, it's very thin. And I'm going to use some of the white right out of my water, my white watercolor pan. And in my previous video, I mentioned that I used gesso because that gave me a really bold line for my large hexagon snowflakes and I found I had found that when I just use the white watercolor paint it sank into the background and I didn't get a nice clear line that I wanted but in this case I actually do want less of a bold line so when this sinks in, it um, will have a more subdued effect. Um, I didn't mention this is a watery white, and sometimes when this is dried out a bit, I just dip into the watery white to get a little more moisture for the paint. There, that's, that's pretty pale there. So. And sometimes I do go over the lines that I've already done if I think they are too pale. Okay, and you can see 
with the blue underneath, I get the effect of a blue shadow. And that is an effect that I like quite a bit. Okay, so we'll finish those ones. You get the idea though for the, the white over the blue. And I think we'll have just a few little dots for variety. And it just fills it in a bit more too. Okay, now I'm going to make a few that are just entirely white. So, and this one, I'm putting partially behind my hexagon. A little bit hard to reach. So you won't see the full snowflake. Because part of it is behind. And a few little decorative bits. I love the effect of very delicate intricate snowflakes. All right, that should be good for that. And then I'm going to make some that are overlapping. So let's put a little one here that just overlaps this one. Paint has dried even just a little bit too much. Okay. So there's one with dots, and next I'm going to make one that is feathery. And let's put it right here and these two can overlap a bit. A friend of mine sent me a link to a video of really close-up photos of snowflakes. And the video mentioned that there are 35 different types of snowflake, even though we all know that um, every snowflake is unique, but there are 35 types and feathery fern-like ones are one type. The most common type is called a dendrite and that means um, it forms in the shape of a tree branching out, so a larger branch and then littler branches going off the sides. But there are some other interesting shapes that I didn't know about and really, really um, fascinating information. So if you want to look up more information about that, just type in something like 35 different types of snowflakes and you'll you'll come up with some really interesting information. Okay, and just a bit longer there. I don't know. When you get more snowflakes on the page, it begins to look more and more interesting. This at the moment um, still looks pretty plain. Um, 
as you go along, the effect um, becomes more interesting. Okay, maybe a little, a little tiny white one here. I cannot see that at all. I think when these dry, I am going to add some sparkles. I think these snowflakes would be really pretty with some sparkles. Okay, that's all I'm going to show you. I'll finish this on my own later, but I do want to just show you my test page, and you can see when, when they start to overlap, and you have different kinds. Some are some are the feathery ones, and some of them have more dots and just different designs. They begin to look more interesting. Okay, and tell you what, um, I'm just going to show you what I do with sparkles. Sometimes I buy better sparkles, but this time I just have the glitter glue from the dollar store and I actually find it works almost as well as the ones that are more expensive. The only thing about the more expensive ones is that they come with a very um, narrow applicator so you can get really um, detailed bits. Um, I can't do that with the dollar store ones but what I do is my other method, um, I use the pointed toothpicks and then just add little bits here and there. And you can use whatever sparkles you, you like. I'm sure you have favorite sparkles if you're a person who likes sparkles. I really love sparkles and shiny. So I often will do that. Oh, and I did put in lots of little dots and that also adds a nice text texture so that's all I do and when it's dry it's really pretty I think I'm going to use my test piece on a on a greeting card so that will be fun for someone to receive so that's what I do for that um, I also want to show you what I did with my leftover hexagons. Um, I made a lot of these. And what I did, I had mentioned in my previous video that I thought I might make a mobile with them. So that's what I did. I glued two hexagon snowflakes together so that there was a snowflake on each side. Let's see if I can get them moving a little bit. And I sandwiched a piece of silver metallic thread in between and then I could use that to tie to the branch and get them to hang. That was really fun to make. I enjoyed it a lot. So I'll just quickly show you that. I'm sure you can figure it out on your own, but I just will show you what I did do. Set that aside. So I have some here. I'll just do a couple. And I do the same thing with my glue that I do with the the glitter glue. I'm just using white glue here. You could use score tape or you know wh whatever um, you want to use to adhere them together. So I just, oh I know one more thing I have to do first. Here is my silver metallic thread. I had lost it before Christmas and I just recently found it so I was really glad to have it again. So I'm just going to cut off a good length, probably mm, 12 inches or so. And then 
I will put my glue on. I hope I'm staying in frame. Sometimes I don't. So just spread it around and I don't do it really that carefully. When you sandwich them together, it will um, go to the edges. So what I like to do is I lay it on there and I try to make it come to the point, one of the points, and then I set my other one on top, squish them together, hold them down just for a moment or two, until it sets up a bit. So set that aside. Let's do one more just for fun. So spread it around. Oh, and I didn't get another length of thread, but let's cut that quickly. Lay that on there. And then put this one on top. So it's very quick and easy to make these. And then this first one um, is starting to come apart, so I just press it down again. And if I have any uneven pieces here, I can just um, trim those with my scissors. Get that good and stuck. And even if after it dries, you have some parts that didn't stick very well, you can just use the toothpick and just put a little bit right in there. Okay, let's trim these. And you do have to be careful not to cut your thread. I've done that. It's not so bad on the opposite sides, but when you're trying to trim this part, so I just pull it aside, trim, and then you get a, a really nicely shaped piece. Okay, and then I don't know if you can see that thread, but I just go to the end and then I will tie it on to my branch. Lots of fun. So that is my video for today. I hope you found it interesting and maybe you'll try some of these ideas. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and if you um, haven't subscribed to my channel I invite you to subscribe and you can um, hit the bell beside the subscribe button and hopefully that will give you a notification when I have a new video out. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.